The word nostalgia, from the Greek nostos, or the journey home, denotes the pain that people feel when severed from the place and the form of life to which they belong. The capacity to feel this pain was regarded by the ancient Greeks as part of a virtuous character, proof of the loyalty that binds the individual to the community. The founding work of our literature, Homer's Odyssey, tells the story of a man who gives up immortality and life with a goddess to travel across dangerous seas to his oikos, to the home where his wife Penelope, son Telemachus, and their household await him, so as to rescue them from the intruders who have tried to dispossess him. Odysseus turns from the immortal, changeless nowhere of Calypso's isle to the mortal, changeable somewhere that is his, to the place bound to him by the firmest of existential ties. To dismiss his longing as utopian is to fail to see that it is part of the most manly and courageous attitude to the future, in which the past is called upon not as a refuge, but as an inspiration and an object of trust. Our poets tell us that we arrive home so as to know the place for the first time, as Eliot puts it in Four Quartets, his great poem of homecoming. Turning for home is not an escape from the world, but an affirmation of it. Such is the theme of Holderlin's Heimkehr, describing the return journey, which is also the forward journey into the place of belonging. In a thousand ways, art and religion offer us homecoming as the true redemption. Those who dismiss this sentiment as mere nostalgia and therefore retrograde, dismiss what we are. If there is utopianism and sentimentality in this confrontation, it is not with the advocates of home and belonging, but with those who imagine that human beings can live in a detached and universal nowhere and still retain the sympathies that make life worthwhile. There is a utopia of somewhere, but there is also a utopia of nowhere, which is the home of frozen hearts.